Hi again. So this episode is going to be all about how a tender review meeting works. And the reason I wanted to do this particular episode is because I've just spent all day in a tender review uh, workshop and it really, um, it was actually a really productive workshop. We had people from uh, operations, from um, like construction supervision, uh, procurement, uh, project management, uh, planning, um, actually two project managers. So yeah, it was a, a good cross section of people in the room. And, you know, we had a lot of productive discussions. So the meeting actually went from 9 a.m. through to about 3 p.m. Uh, we didn't really stop for lunch. We just kind of went, grabbed our lunch and then kept eating while we were working. But um, in the end, we managed to get through um, a number of very chunky tenders for a multi-million dollar project. And yes, I just thought it would be really interesting to uh, describe the process that we go through, uh, particularly for people who are considering a career in engineering and are wanting to know more about what the um, uh, what tasks are involved in an engineering career beyond the stuff that you learn at uni. So with the tender review meeting, the purpose is to pick the preferred tenderer, but you need to, um, and this this applies more so with government organisations than with other organisations, just because government organisations are subject to more scrutiny than um, other private sector companies. Generally, what you're trying to achieve is to um, show that the most cost effective tender has been selected. And so um, what people who are sitting in that workshop need to do before the workshop is they actually need to go through each of the tenders um, cover to cover and they'll have an assessment criteria and it'll outline things like um, appreciation for the project scope, methodology, program, uh, key people, organisational structure, um, cost, safety record, um, oh sorry not cost, um, strike that cost cost is not part of the first level of assessment um, it'll have things like uh, what did i mention um, safety uh, track records so previous projects that they've worked on relevant experience all of those types of things basically anything that you as a group have agreed prior to the tenders coming in um, that will be a priority for your assessment that all needs to be outlined on the assessment sheet and then when you read through each of the assessments individually um, you rank them and often you'll have a scoring guide as well so um, it doesn't matter whether you read it at 8 a.m. or 6 p.m. or on your way home on the bus if if it earns a six you'll score it a six there should be some consistency and different people of course will have different opinions but in a perfect world, if they all had exactly the same information and interpretation, they would all give the same score in theory. OK, but what you're trying to do with the workshop is tease out the uh, value of all of the different perspectives and how different people see the value of the different um, of the different submissions. So you do the assessment individually, you score against all of the criteria that you've agreed, and then the workshop is where you go through those line by line for each of the tenders and you discuss what scores you gave and your original scores get recorded. And then you talk about, okay, why did you give them this score when this person gave them that score? And you go, oh, well, you know, I read the tender and um, these are the three things that I notice noticed um, these three things stuck out as real positives and I thought they offered advantages um, whereas these things I saw as weaknesses or potentially um, areas where they had misinterpreted the scope of what we were asking for and you look at um, the methodology that they have presented and you pick up any risks that you think their methodology is going to create or any gaps where they might not have addressed key criteria. So you're just going through all of that and at the end of the day for each of the tenderers and each of the scores that the individuals have assigned them, you want to agree as a group what the actual score will be. So if someone's given them a five, a six, a seven and an eight, then you need to talk amongst yourselves and agree what it is. And often it won't be the average of the scores that you choose. 
often um, it's through the process of discussion you become aware of things that you had um, not picked up because of course nobody knows everything about the project going into this tender evaluation. Project managers have a much better appreciation for how easy it will be to deliver a project than other people will. Um, engineers will have a much better appreciation of the technical aspects and whether or not they've been addressed and the suitability of the type of equipment that's being proposed. Then you get people like um, safety representatives will see red flags in the methodology in terms of safety risks whereas people who are more office-based might not pick those up so um, the idea is to have a good cross-section of people in the room who will pick up all of the red flags as well as the benefits and have an open discussion and then the group as a group will agree what score should be allocated for each of those criteria for each of the tenders so that process can take an hour or more for each tenderer. Now, at any point during this process, you can eliminate uh, tenderers if they don't respond to the scope of work that you put forward. So if they clearly missed uh, a critical part, if they um, clearly didn't provide information that was requested, uh, if they move lots of things that should be part of the scope into provisional sum items. That's not necessarily enough to get them eliminated, but the um, commercial services team will often go back and adjust or provide an alternate price that includes like for like scope across all of the tenders because there'll always be a couple that, you know, try and try and be clever and sneak things out of the scope to lower their price because of course they all know that price is a factor so they all try to uh, push it down as much as reasonably possible. So there are, there are processes in place to make sure that that happens. When you get scores for each of the tenders, that's often then when your procurement person will um, reveal the prices for each of the tenders. And you can see, um, oh well, in a lot of cases, you'll use the, um, the scores that you have assigned to each of the uh, tenders to calculate a risk adjusted price. So it might be that they say, it might be that tender number one says that uh, the project is a $4 million project, but based on the review that all of the members of the evaluation panel have done, uh, they think, well, actually, there's a bit of risk with what they're saying. They don't quite have the skills and experience um, to deliver this flawlessly. We think they can do the job, but it might take a bit of work to get there. So their $4 million price will get adjusted by the, um, by the template to demonstrate uh, the level of risk that the evaluation panel thinks is uh, suitable to apply to their tender. So it might be that a $4 million price becomes a $4.2 million price. And then the next tenderer who added a $5 million price might stay at 5 million because they showed a better understanding of the projects and the risks, sorry, the scope and the risks. And it seemed that their price accurately or more fully reflected what the project would require. Then you might find the third tenderer comes in at 3.8 million um, but we think that their price should be adjusted up to 3.9 because there's one element that they didn't pick up and it's quite a large cost item. So yeah, you end up um, having the original scores and the risk adjusted scores. And then um, it's a process of, you know, documenting that that's all of the, that's how you formalize the process. But what gets done in the workshop is generally that level of decision making and then you can see okay so which which tender has the lowest risk adjusted price and then at that point the the panel members might just take a breath look at the outcome and see whether they agree with it um, yeah you still want to do that final reality check at the end often nothing changes but there might be there might be an instance where you know you you find that two tenderers are so close and one offers a significantly lower risk or one offered a piece of equipment that was significantly better value so there might be in some cases reasons why you might choose not the lowest cost option um, it might be things like um, uh, if you're not convinced that there'll be 
available on site to do the work because the key people are actually out of town. So there's always going to be a, a day lag for them to hop on a plane and come to site if, if needed. Um, there could be all sorts of reasons why you might justify making a choice that's not the lowest cost but usually they come into play when it's a line ball type decision and two tenderers are very close. So yeah, that is uh, the process of a tender evaluation at a very high level without talking about any project specifics or any uh, yeah any um, yeah without talking about any project specifics. I hope you found that interesting. Um, as you can see I really enjoy the process. I think it's um I think it's really interesting to see um, how a project starts to move from a concept on paper into something that people are really thinking about building, really thinking about how much it'll cost. Um, they start getting into the details of how much dirt needs to be moved around and where pieces of equipment are going to be stored on the site while they do it. I just think it's really nice to start seeing a project come to life and you're really at this point on the cusp of signing a contract and seeing the project start um, with a vengeance. So yes, I hope that was very interesting. Um, please um, like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video. I intend to make many more. Um, yeah, leave a comment if you want to know more about just general engineering, uh, what happens, um, you know, the stuff that I don't necessarily teach you in uni because it's um it's not the technical stuff it's the yeah it's the other peripheral stuff that makes the job exciting I'll see you next time